Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for being here uh, on a Thursday afternoon. Um, it's great to see you all. Uh, my name is Duncan Wood. I'm the director of the Mexico Institute at the Woodrow Wilson Center. Um, we are very, very happy to have uh, Lorenzo Cordova, Dr. Lorenzo Cordova Vianello with us. Um, Dr. Cordova is a, is a friend of the, uh, of the Wilson Center, a friend of the Mexico Institute, um, and obviously a great friend of democracy in, uh, in Mexico. Um, you, uh, you probably have his, uh, his, his bio in front of you, so I'm not going to read all of it. But uh, I would just uh, want to point out that uh, you know, in addition to his extensive academic record, publishing record, um, you know, he has a, a, a very strong record in public service. Uh, working amongst uh, other roles as technical secretary of the Mexican Senate Working Group that processed the political reform of 2010, which really changed the political landscape in the country. And from December 2011 to April 2014, the Chamber of Deputies appointed him the Electoral Counselor of the Federal Electoral Institute before it became the INE. Um, Dr. Cordova, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. Um, it's very, very important in the Washington context um, that we hear uh, what's happening with regards to Mexican democracy, with uh, regard to institutions. I'm not going to uh, give my opinion on any of this, but uh, I know that a lot of people are concerned right now about the strength of institutions in Mexico. And so hearing from uh, the president councillor of the INE at this point in time is very, very important. So I'm going to pass you the, uh, the microphone, la palabra, okay. and please uh, uh, enlighten us about what's happening in, in your part of the world. And then we hope that we have a very lively conversation here around this table. Over thank you so much. Thank you, Duncan. I would uh, appreciate I would thank, first of all, uh, uh, Duncan's invitation and Woodrow Wilson's. Uh, I want to be here. It's very important for me. I don't know if, if I've been able to enlighten someone here, but anyway, I will try uh, at least to express not just some reflections about Mexico, but also let me say some concerns that are not exclusively uh, 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 about uh, uh, Mexican uh, uh, democracy situation. But uh, I think that right now we are facing uh, 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 common problems, all democracies around the world. Uh, I think times in which uh, the people thought uh, about what the uh, challenges of the countries uh, uh, in the, its way to democratization faces uh, and that they were different from the ones who had the countries with, the, uh, with long uh, democracies, I mean, uh, passed out. And right now, we're, uh, no matter which uh, degree of development, democratic development, uh, uh, all around the world are facing mostly the same kind of problems. I'm talking about, uh, you know, the misinformation and disinformation and fake news problem, uh, or uh, you know, the uh, uh, the fact that we are right now our societies are uh, become more and more polarized uh, 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 politically speaking, and so on. I mean, uh, uh, right now there are uh, global challenges. Mexico is not uh, uh, there are not absence from Mexico, but obviously Mexico has a specific contest. Uh, with many changes, uh, uh, politically and socially speaking, even economically speaking, that uh, uh, of course uh, creates a special environment in which uh, we have uh, 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 to think specifically on how, uh, what have we done, and uh, how can we face those uh, challenges in uh, specifically, as I said, in our country. Um, I would like to start just with your experts, all of you are experts from uh, on Mexico, but I will start just with a, a, a brief, a small introduction. Um, I've already prepared some kind of presentation. I mean, I, I will try to, say, to, to fit to it, but uh, I prefer to use it just you know, as a backup, more or less. No? Uh, uh, well, uh, one of the uh, uh, theoretical defi def defiance we are facing on, and I'm sorry, I am a scholar, who was uh, and I'm borrowed for the public service, and after that I will back to the university. But I mean, it's, it's a very interesting to understand uh, the point in where uh, we are standing on. I mean, uh, in Mexico right now, uh, uh, there is a, a, a theoretical debate uh, uh, between those who sustain uh, uh, in what I assume is a more or less a creationist uh, perspective that democracy uh, uh, starts in Mexico, no? 
the 1st of July in, of 2018. Uh, that's the break point, not that uh, uh, bring us in a new era. I hope so. We have a lot of challenges in, uh, in terms of insecurity, in terms of inequality, poverty, corruption, impunity, and so on. And uh, uh, evidently, we have not been able to face them and solve them uh, before now. So I hope uh, we have already started a new era to face and solve those problems. But the fact is that we, uh, that if we talk, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, to, we talk of our democracy, uh, democratic life, we didn't start anything. On the contrary, my point of view is that the first of July is the ending point until now of a long story of building institutionality, democracy, uh, democracy, trustable elections, fair, free and fair elections, and so on. I mean, and the transition process in Mexico, uh, which is uh, probably uh, 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 very atypical uh, for those who, you know, maybe in the 80s and the 90s, no, started the, trans the transition into democracy processes, uh, it's very peculiar. And uh, uh, it's very important, I think, to understand the moment in which we are, to uh, uh, make a brief, very brief, very synthetic uh, 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 pass over on, the, on what we have done in the last 40 years. Uh, I assume, oh, okay, this is, Maybe it's better like this. I mean, uh, we we uh, I, I I intend as a, as a, uh, 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 an attempt of synthesis uh, uh, to reduce you know the whole explanation of the transition into democracy process um, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, periodical in attempt to face and solve some needs uh, during the last forty years we have faced of. Uh, we come, as you well know, uh, from a, a, a regime, a political regime, very uh, vertical and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, very close. So in, in, in the first moment, the first need we faced on was to open that system and to ma make it more inclusive in a democratic uh, key. That means to recognize Opposition who was uh, uh, banded from the political system before, that uh, supposed to open spaces, uh, so through elections the, the the plurality could express in the in the parliament and so on, in the congress and so on. In a second moment, particularly after uh, to, uh, one uh, in the 1988 elections, the very contested elections, the claim of a huge fraud. Uh, uh, an election uh, uh, identify or uh, sadly known as the, with the caída del sistema, no? uh, uh, a new need uh, 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 get in front of us uh, to solve. Uh, the need to uh, create uh, uh, in a, a regulation, uh, uh, a new electoral system with the new institutions that uh, uh, could afford what, uh, uh, as we said in the early, 90, uh, in the early 90s, no, uh, that the vote could be freely expressed and counted, and the vote and the votes really counted. Uh, uh, very soon we achieved. Uh, and th that's the reform, by the way, that uh, 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 with a huge institutional bet uh, saw uh, IFE, no. Uh, 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 settled, uh, born. Uh, very soon, uh, the problem, I think, was not on how the votes are uh, uh, emitted and how the votes are counted. Uh, uh, and, and a new need arises in the horizon. Uh, in 1994 elections, which, by the way, were the first elections in which an oversight uh, uh, effort were made, a very different and, and a very elementary uh, uh, oversight effort. I mean, it's, it's a germinal effort if you compare it with what we have right now. Uh, by the way, right now, I think uh, Mexico has one of the oversight systems, of, I, I mean, uh, 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 for fin public fi uh, uh, political financiation uh, more robust around the world. Uh, um, uh, uh, the powers that INE Previously, if but right now, INE has to uh, uh, transcend 
uh, the uh, uh, bank secrecy, uh, bank, uh, bank secrets, and uh, bank secrecy and uh, fiscal secrecy, and so on. Uh, no many EMBs around the world uh, has it, has it has them. Uh, uh, but the first that first uh, exercise allowed us at least with official numbers to know. Uh, how uh, we were uh, in terms of equality of financiation and uh, campaign expenditure uh, in that election, as the same President Cedillo says when he turned uh, uh, on the, 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 the government, uh, uh, I came from a free and fair election, but uh, profoundly unequal. Indeed, 85% of the uh, 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 campaign expenditures were were, uh, were expended was expended just uh, by the PRI. So uh, those new, that new need uh, put into our horizon, as I said, you know the the necessity to build an electoral system based on an uh, an equal or a minimum equal conditions for for competition. Uh, this third generation of reforms. Uh, specifically in the 96 reform and the 2007 uh, reform uh, uh, intend to create this uh, equality basis for electoral and democratic competitions uh, in uh, two levels. Uh, on one hand, uh, uh, a bet, a very important bet, uh, to get uh, uh, equality in the, in the political financiation. It was a bet uh, that supposed uh, uh, to increase dramatically the public funding uh, of the political parties and to make those public fundings uh, 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 hegemonious in front of the public uh, private funding. We have a mixed uh, 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 financi political financiation system, but with, uh, 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 with a, a predominant uh, public funds uh, financiation. On the other hand, uh, uh, and that was the aim of the 2007 reform, we uh, redef redefine uh, uh, the, um, uh, and the political um, communication uh, uh, system. Uh, it was a bet which uh, is located on the opposite side of a Citizens United versus uh, FEC, no? Uh, that's because uh, we banded uh, the possibility to buy publicity on radio and TV, and we use the state times to uh, distribute them among the, uh, the political parties, so to allow them to uh, 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 set on radio and TV their uh, uh, spots, their propaganda. Um, that's how we reached 2014, the last electoral reform, the one who uh, uh, ends in his life, and uh, I'm sorry, if his life, and uh, 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 transform that uh, well-known brand. You know? uh, everybody around the world uh, said, uh, Mexican people, you're crazy. You're killing a, a, a well-established brand. No, if, uh, 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 and you're substituting it for uh, a new brand. Well, right now, after, after five years, I think uh, we have uh, done already the job to, well, to settle well, I mean, uh, 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 and this new brand. But the fact is, the, the intention of that uh, reform was uh, to uh, 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 to provoke a, a sort of kind of standardization of mechanisms, rules, and criteria, uh, procedures on how uh, elections are done in Mexico. The idea was that the level, the, the quality of the, of the of those standards in the federal elections could be translated into the local elections, specifically to uh, 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 avoid. Uh, uh, the, uh, the political capture or, or, or subordination that local governments uh, uh, have reached through local EMBs. Um, that's supposed to create the creation of a national uh, electoral uh, of a national electoral system uh, headed up uh, headed off by, by the uh, by the INE. Uh, right now, even if we have EMBs in each state, local EMBs. Uh, uh, their, uh, their members, the members of the boards, are appointed uh, over overview and uh, eventually uh, removed by INE, by General Council of INE, uh, uh, in a sort kind of attempt of blind date their autonomy, their constitutional autonomy, besides uh, a local, both social, economical, and political powers. Uh, despite what many people argue when that reform was achieved, 
uh, after five years, almost six years, of a, of a life of this new national electoral system, I can say, we can say, that it already works and it, wa and it was possible, you know, you know to uh, 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 get, it, get it into function and uh, getting functioning. Um, it's a, 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 a very complicated system. It requires not only uh, a lot of, uh, 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 um, you know, to solve complexity of the work, of the joint work between 33 uh, uh, administrative electoral bodies, no? the one of each state, of one of the 32 states, plus INE. Uh, the coordination is, uh, it, it, it has become fundamental to get uh, elections in the good port. Um, uh, but uh, despite, I mean, the people who, who, who at the moment says it was an, an, uh, an impossible to instrument reform, right now that reform works and has allowed us uh, five years of uh, 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 pretty well done elections. Um, that uh, 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 supposed anyway a lot uh, uh, of uh, work to do. Uh, I think this uh, slide can show what I intend to, to say. Uh, uh, during the 23 years of IFES life, that institution organized 18 federal elections. Right now, because of INE has to run exclusively federal elections, by its own I mean, it has to participate and co-organize co uh, elections with the local MBs, EMBs. Actually, the, ground the groundwork uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of uh, local elections is, uh, uh, is uh, an INE responsibility. So the role of INE in local elections is uh, fundamental, is, uh, is very important, and in some cases, such as in Puebla and in uh, last this year, and in uh, uh, Colima a couple of years ago, in some cases, INE has uh, done all the job in the organization of local elections. Uh, we have the power to decide uh, to attract local elections and to subrogate ourselves into uh, uh, local EMBs and done all the job by our own. Our own. Um, well, in five years, INE has participated, has organized 198 fed, both federal and local elections, four federal elections and 194 uh, uh, local elections. Next year, we'll, we'll face uh, elections in two states uh, and the local Congress election in Coahuila and the municipalities elections in, uh, in Hidalgo, so we will reach 200 elections. Uh, I don't know if there is any EMB around the world ha that has already organized so, ma so many elections, but uh, next year, if you invite me again, Duncan, I, I would tell you what uh, it feels to be uh, 200 elections already done EMB. So, but anyway, the, the job is a lot. The complexity of INES job is, uh, increases dramatically. Uh, but uh, the fact is, is uh, I mean, the... the, the, the uh, such an amount of those 198 elections. But uh, another way to, uh, 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 to uh, judge if th this system has already worked, uh, this new system, this new national system, is uh, uh, to take a look uh, on what uh, uh, turn turnover uh, 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 re uh, results uh, shows us. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, right now, uh, what with turnover, I, I meant you know the switch of uh, winning from one election uh, uh, to the, to another one, uh, and the average that we reach in in turnovers in, in uh, elections uh, held by between uh, 2015 and 2019 included is more than 60 percent. So the chances that one political party who wins an election wins the next uh, electoral round. Uh, uh, both in the federal, I mean, Senate, uh, 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 the Chamber of Deputies and uh, uh, governorships and uh, local congresses and uh, municipalities, is uh, uh, the chances that he wins again is only four among every time, uh, uh, times. Uh, and the, the, these are the, 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 the data of the uh, federal elections. 
this one are the data of the uh, governorship elections. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, 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 point. Uh, we have run uh, 36 uh, governorship elections, governor's elections, and uh, in 23 cases there was, there was a turnover. And uh, um, uh, as you can see at the right, there is no one political party that could uh, claim to be the only benefic beneficiary of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, 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 of this result. Uh, everybody in the last five years have won and uh, lose elections. I'm, I'm clear, that doesn't make us more democratic, a more democratic country. I mean, uh, uh, turnover is not uh, 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 an index of, uh, of democracy, but it is uh, the, 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 that the, the, exist the, the existing rules and conditions for, if the voters decide so, uh, get a, a turnover. I mean, is, uh, are the conditions that makes a, 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 an electoral system democratic or not? And the fact that we had that average of turn, turnover uh, uh, is the best proof that the conditions are there, are still there. Um, if you uh, 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 want another uh, way to uh, judge, this is what is happening in the, in the, in the, in the local congresses election and the municipality elections. Uh, another data to uh, judge, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the state of health of this uh, new electoral system uh, raised by the unborn in the 2014 reform is maybe the amount of uh, 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 claims uh, against electoral result. And the fact is that in the last two years, at least, uh, no major uh, contestation has been uh, presented uh, against uh, uh, elections. Uh, uh, that doesn't make us a country in which, you know, that, uh, 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 um, uh, that phrase from uh, uh, Felipe Gonzalez at the end of the 90s uh, is already achieved in Mexico. I mean, Felipe Gonzalez said that uh, uh, the acceptance of defeat is one of the uh, uh, conditions for a democratic uh, 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 cohabitation. I don't know if we already achieved that. The fact is, is that the last two years, there were no major contestations against elections. I don't know if we already, as a society, and uh, particularly the political actors, uh, will not uh, 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 compel in the future an election claiming a fraud. I don't know that here, right? OK, as I said, we are facing global uh, 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 problems, no? very common problems. Well, right now we are in, uh, like the, in the same uh, status that the oldest democracy in the world, which is not bad. No, no on the contrary, no, I'm just joking, sorry. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, what's next? Well, right now uh, uh, we are uh, uh, facing on uh, uh, a couple of years, I mean 2020, and particularly 2021, very uh, complex in, in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, democra in, in the democratic issues and electoral issues. Uh, next year, uh, as I said, we will just face two local elections. But in September, that means uh, nine months from now, no? we will start uh, uh, the organization of the largest election ever in Mexico. Maybe some one of you have already heard the president of INE uh, uh, in 2018 saying we're facing the largest election. Well, that happens every time we have our federal elections until at least, you know, the growing uh, 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 of the population average is still going up. Um, indeed, we will face the larger election in 21, despite it is only a midterm elections uh, uh, for two major reasons. The, the first one, is precisely in the growth of the uh, electoral list. We expect in 2021 to have uh, uh, a list, an electoral list of, uh, that probably will reach uh, 96 million uh, potential voters, uh, which suppose six more million that we had than, th than those we had in 2018 elections. That supposes, in terms of organizing an election, uh, the, the, the growth of, of all 
data, the number of polling stations we sh should have, in should, uh, shall insta inst installate, uh, the number of polling station uh, officers we will need, the number of uh, citizens we will have to visit to make the raffle from which we will select after uh, that, you know, the polling station officers and so on. But also, in the other, in, in the other hand, uh, 2021 elections will be the largest ever because uh, uh, this, uh, simultaneously, uh, I mean, the, the fact that we had never had so much local elections uh, 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 running at the same time of a federal one. Uh, um, the, uh, the 32 states in 2021 will have some kind of local election running at the same time of the uh, federal uh, deputy chamber uh, election. Uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, well, there is no the, the, the cemetery down there, but we will have in the local level uh, 15 governorships in, in, in dispute which is practically the half of the country. Uh, uh, we will have 30 states in which there will be a renewal, a complete renewal of the local Congress, and another 30 states in which uh, there will be some uh, municipal elections for a global number of n more than uh, n uh, 1,900 municipal elections. So the, the, the total number of uh, public posts in dispute on that election will rise until almost 3,500 uh, uh, elected posts, which suppose 250 more than were uh, in challenge in 2018. So uh, uh, the amount of electoral dispute, of uh, political dispute, as you can see, is huge. Uh, uh, and you must take in account also that, it's, as it usually happens elsewhere, everywhere, uh, a midterm elections became also a sort of kind of referendum in which the electors judges, I mean, the, the going on of the government. So uh, 2021 elections uh, are a very delicate moment for our country, not just because those would be the last uh, federal elections uh, uh, the, the actual president of INE will run. No, uh, my mandate will, terminate, will, be, will end in 2023. Uh, well, uh, 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 we are already facing another challenges, not just technical and organizational challenges, as I said. Uh, uh, but right now is a very complex moment in the country. Many things are changing. Uh, uh, there are a lot of novelties after 2018 election, uh, 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 and, and I mean in political terms. For instance, is the first time since 1997, uh, I mean the first election, that uh, IFE, uh, an IFE absolutely autonomous organized, uh, that uh, we have a, a, a predetermined majority in the Congress. Uh, until now, every uh, agreement at the Congress, every bill required, uh, you know, the agreement between at least two political parties. Right now, we have a predetermined majority. Uh, it's a new thing to deal with. I mean, it's not the first time we had those majorities in Mexico, but yes, in our democratic era. No? Uh, on, on other hand, we have a very uh, 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 transformed communication, communication environment. I mean, we never had, uh, 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 and yes, I know you have a, a Twitter, yes, Duncan, but uh, 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 we never had a president that every day hands, uh, uh, stands a, a press conference that has already become not just a communicational exercise, but in many senses, that's a decision, uh, 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 a space to take political decisions. Um, on, uh, on the third uh, uh, place, uh, I would say that another novelty is the fact that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is a very polarized society in political terms. I know this happens in many countries. Uh, 
This is happening in many countries. But uh, uh, that creates, at least in Mexico, a very complex uh, uh, ambience, a very complex environment uh, uh, in which INE has to work. Um, and that, uh, uh, I mean, is, is not a problem just to deal with these novelties. Uh, uh, I think there are some challenges, uh, some uh, uh, um, uh, defiant situations that we are facing off, at least three of them. Um, on one hand, on the first, in first uh, place, uh, we are facing the attempt of uh, an electoral reform. Uh, this would be the first reform, if it goes on, in all the modern democratic history of Mexico that is not uh, 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 asked for by opposition parties. That there is no problem in elections to solve with that reform. There is no one, a clear need uh, such as th those four needs I, I, I said before, uh, to solve. Uh, and uh, there, uh, there is also uh, uh, the fact that uh, many people agree that uh, 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 many of those attempts to reform, many of those bills who have already presented, formally presented beside the Congress, are uh, not intended necessarily to improve the electoral system, but to provoke on to, or to go th uh, through a, a, a political capture of electoral authorities. That's not what I am saying. That's what uh, the public opinion, uh, uh, a large part of public opinion, are saying. And um, uh, uh, all those reforms are aimed by the intention to get uh, electoral system cheaper. You know. The logic of austerity, which is a, a flag, the flagship of this government, uh, a flagship or, or a policy uh, uh, against which INE is not uh, 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 an opposition. I mean, I would say uh, and that probably INE is the only uh, uh, public office that in the last years uh, has applied austerity measures that goes even beyond the uh, politics of austerity established in the budgets. Uh, 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 maybe some of you remember that a couple of years ago, uh, when there was a, 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 a public anger uh, for the rise of uh, oil uh, and gasoline uh, uh, prices, uh, we decided to return to uh, the, the Treasury uh, more than 1 billion pesos uh, which was a, a, a were uh, uh, given to us to uh, make a, a, a new building and to so save a lot of money on rents. But uh, I mean, what I what I intend to say is that that is the the, the aim, uh, or at least the public aim, the, the public declare aim of those reforms. The fact is that evidence shows that uh, actually those reforms won't reduce the cost of elections. On the contrary. For instance, there is one uh, bill, one proposal, that suggests to eliminate the local EMBs, and that INE runs by its own the whole federal and local electoral processes. Well, to do that, INE that right now has no structure at the municipal level, or not structures at the local district levels, we have 300 uh, local, uh, lo we have 300 bodies, to run elections at the 300 federal districts, uh, suppose an increasing of the INES budget, or more than, uh, uh, in, 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 we make already a study, uh, around 4 billion pesos. So where is the austerity and where, is the, where are the savings? Uh, despite that, uh, some of the proposals, uh, and let me just uh, talk about two points. One of those proposals, uh, uh, intent that the uh, state structures, in a state structures, that uh, in face of every election we appointed, we create, um, you know, the in a structure is a vertical structure. We have a permanent uh, uh, and professionalized uh, structure all around the country, 
And every time we, we face an election, uh, the General Council appoints uh, a, 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 a state council in each one of the 32 states. Those councils are supposed to appoint at, at their time a council in every one of the 300 districts. And those district con uh, councils uh, are the ones who determine how many uh, polling stations should be installed, where should uh, the, the, the be installed, uh, who will be the polling station officers, and so on. I mean, the ruling, uh, 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 the running the election. Well, that proposal intends that the appointment of the members of the state councils, which right now are appointed by General Council of Ine, should be appointed by the Chamber of Deputies. So, it's uh, 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 clearly a political uh, uh, takeover, I mean, a political control of the structure that operates election. And obviously, it hurts hardly in its autonomy. Um, and uh, another proposal, uh, uh, by the way, it's a proposal that my wife wishes uh, goes to good port, intend to uh, reduce the term of the president of the you know? uh, uh, Right now, uh, we, we the consulars and, and, and the president, uh, uh, the presidency of the INE, uh, we are appointed by uh, nine years. The logic besides that was that those appointments goes beyond the political cycles. You know? uh, the three-year cycle that rules the Congress, uh, of the Chamber of Deputies, the six-year uh, cycle that uh, stands the presidency and the Senate. You know? So the appointments, of course, the appointments of, of, of the members of the Council are made by the Chamber of the Deputies. It re they required two-thirds, a qualified majority, uh, to be done. Uh, but the idea was that the term uh, uh, goes beyond the political cycles as a way to strengthen autonomy. Well, this proposal uh, uh, not just pretend to reduce the term of the actual president, which, as I said, uh, um, uh, um, the wife of a friend of a partner of me at the council, no? uh, we met a couple of years, uh, weeks ago, and, um, and she said, uh, uh, me, she expressed me my her, her concern about this proposal. And I said, thank you, Marta, very much for your solidarity. And she said, no, 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 it's not a matter of you. I'm very angered, not because of you, but because that bill only includes you and not my, my husband, no? <laughs> but anyway, I mean, jokes apart. Uh, no, the fact is that uh, uh, the problem is that if uh, it, that, that proposal pretends that the presidency will be determined by the Chamber of Deputies among the people who are part of the board of the council every three years. So every Chamber of Deputies, every majority determined in every election should be the one who will appoint the president who will run just one election. And obviously that uh, it's a proposal that will undermine uh, 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 Ines autonomy. And, uh, uh, and the role of the presidency as the coordinator of a plural body. Well, uh, those are the facts. I mean, uh, uh, those are bills already presented. Uh, it's true, uh, Morena, uh, the leaderships of the, of the uh, 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 branch uh, of Morena, uh, both at the Chamber of Deputies and, and the Senate, has already said that's not an initiative of Morena. It's true, the president of Morena has already said that's not a Morena's initiative. Even the president uh, in uh, Juan Mañanera has already said it's not the intention of this government to achieve an electoral reform before uh, 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 the, the midterm elections. Uh, the fact is that, that anyway, those bills are supported by more or less 130, 140 uh, legislators, which means that 25% of the chamber I mean, they're not joking anyway. The fact is that uh, uh, um, that provoked, uh, I must say, a generalized uh, uh, public opinion uh, position uh, against those reforms. And uh, uh, many people has, uh, right now is warning uh, uh, about any uh, uh, regression, eventual regre democratic regression, if those bills 
passed on. Uh, pass on. Um, um, the second challenge we are facing right now uh, 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 is uh, uh, budget uh, uh, affair. I mean, last, uh, last week, two weeks ago, uh, uh, the Chamber of Deputies has, uh, has established the budget for the 2020, and it has suffered the largest cut ever uh, 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 regarding the amount uh, we have requ uh, request. Uh, it's a sort of kind of paradox uh, uh, that uh, precisely the year in which we are starting the organization of the largest election ever, we will receive the largest cut ever. Uh, I, I want to be clear, that's a done fact. I mean, there's no uh, way back. Uh, 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 so right now, next week, we will uh, meet at the Council uh, uh, to determine uh, which promise, promise will be cancelled, which promise will be affected uh, by this uh, uh, cut budget, you know? uh, uh, by this budget cut. Uh, um, uh, I must say that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the main operation uh, of INE won't be affected, but we will work in permanent risk. Uh, for instance, uh, we've already decided that one of the cuts will impact the investment uh, we needed to do on technology uh, to change the informatic equipment that allows us to, to take uh, the monitoring of radio and TV, uh, which is a permanent uh, uh, in its attribution. Uh, don't ask me why, because I will answer, because that's what the Constitution says, no? Uh, we are the only EMB around the world that monitor the whole broadcast of radio and TV. Uh, um, uh, that's because uh, that's the way in which we uh, uh, verify that the uh, uh, tra transmission of the, uh, of the public, uh, political party's publicity that the INE uh, uh, orders is already transmitted, and uh, uh, it's the way to avoid uh, uh, or verify that there is no uh, uh, publicity, paid publicity, uh, on radio and TV. Uh, Can I ask yeah, sure. Are you also responsible for what's on social media? Uh, well, um, yes. Or it's just broadcasting? You know? No, no, just broadcasting. The, the monitoring, I mean, that, that uh, effort, uh, that uh, power is just for radio and TV. But we are responsible to uh, solve any uh, uh, contestation. Uh, uh, between political parties, uh, any accusation to use the social media, uh, violating the law, uh, uh, and right now the only thing that uh, the law says is uh, uh, accuse some other, calumniar uh, uh, some other, not uh, to accuse some other to commit a crime. Uh, and if you allow me, uh, I, I can say something about how are we dealing with the social media misinformation uh, 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 during elections. Um, uh, but what I intend to say is that uh, we will have no money to change those equipments. Those equipments have a, a, a lifetime of five years, uh, and the last time we changed it was in 2014. That doesn't mean that the monitoring uh, 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 actuation will be pulled down from one day for, uh, to another, but it's very probable that we will have to replace very quickly those equipments that will shut down because of the use, because of the, the, they, were, they become useless. No? Uh, uh, or, for instance, we, are, we will decide uh, uh, to move on and uh, push forward the electoral calendars the more, the most we can, the more we can, without violating law, so to get some savings. What I intend to say is, because of the budget cost, uh, uh, we will still be operational, but we will have not uh, maneuvering margin. I mean, we will work uh, uh, permanently on the edge. Let me say it like that. The third uh, challenge is the fact that in, e in April, next April, four of the 11 members of the council end their, their term, their appointment, and uh, so uh, four new members will be appointed. Um, and I just say, the last appointments that the Congress has already done in the last month uh, uh, to uh, to uh, the people who uh, part of boards or chairs, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the independent agency, 
uh, has produced, at least to say it very politely, you know, uh, a lot of critics among public opinion. Uh, uh, the last one, the president of the Human Rights Commission. No? Uh, so, in that context, will be, uh, there will be there will occur the appointment of four new members, uh, and I would like to uh, point out that uh, uh, many uh, after the reform, the 2014 reform, many of the decisions that INA takes requires by law a qualified majority of eight. Uh, 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 among 11 vote, uh, votes, possible votes. So, uh, uh, I mean, that's a responsibility to create the consensus and, and the internal consensus as a responsibility of President Ovine. But if, evidently, if those appointments stand on, the, on a, a partisan uh, councillors, we will have a problem. I hope not. Fortunately, there, was, there is a, a very strong uh, opinion, uh, public opinion current that uh, claims right now uh, to uh, uh, watch out uh, for any decision that could uh, undermine INES autonomy. I will end, if you allow me, just uh, saying, no, no, but for me it's important, but yes, okay. Uh, 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 saying just a couple of things about uh, uh, um, uh, uh, how we deal with this global problem, which means uh, uh, the eruption of social media in elections and uh, 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 you know the possibility of uh, 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 that uh, misinformation, disinformation, and fake news affect free and fair elections. Um, in 2018 uh, election, we decided, uh, in face of that election, we decided to, to improve uh, 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 um, a new strategy, uh, particularly taking on account what happened around the world in 2016. I mean, the Brexit, the Colombian referendum, and US election, presidential election. Uh, so uh, um, we decided to not follow uh, what some people already call the French model, which is a, regulator, a, 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 a model that bets on regulation, uh, strength regulation, and even criminalization of fake news, spread of fake news, and so on. Um, in part, we decided that because we are responsible, as I said, uh, to uh, solve the claims, uh, uh, the complaints during a campaign, uh, uh, political campaigns between political parties. And uh, to define what is a fake news, or what is a half-truth, no? it's a very complex issue. Uh, uh, and uh, it's very easy to, uh, uh, to slide on into censorship. So we decided, instead of that, uh, to uh, um, bet into another uh, 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 logic, which is essentially to fight this information with proper, opportune, and, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, assertive information. Uh, some people already told uh, at the UN, already called uh, our bet as a, Mex as a Mexican model. The fact is uh, and that we uh, intended to uh, implement that model in three major uh, uh, levels. The first one is uh, 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 to assume that an EMB has particular during elections, not only but during elections, uh, during campaigns specifically, uh, has to become a major uh, 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 information, information agency. Uh, if an EMB uh, 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 acts only when there is a problem and tries to explain what happened, we assume you're not explaining, you're making damage control. And uh, so the best way to uh, front, uh, uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, front, you know, the, the confront the the the, the misinformation and, and fake news challenge, is to get uh, to become much more assertive, to explain in a very easy way, in a very pedagogical pedagogical way. Uh, uh, there are many technical and sophisticated procedures that we are compelled to explain in, a, in the easiest way we can. Uh, for instance, just to make an example, an example, if you uh, talk about, a, okay, at, at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, the elections day, uh, we will give the results of the quick count without explaining 
much, with many times many time before, what a quick count is, what can you expect of it, uh, what are the possibilities that we count uh, uh, give ups, um, uh, what happens if there is a, a situation of too close to coal and so on, you're not, you will, you're not accomplishing you know, the task of explaining. The second uh, level is the, uh, the relationship between uh, with social media networks. Uh, we are the first uh, EMB around the world who uh, achieved an, uh, 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 an agreement, agreement with both social, uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Google. Uh, we understand who we, uh, whom are, we are dealing with. I mean, they're not ladies of charity. No? Uh, there are enterprises that are not, they are not non-profitable uh, 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 agencies. I mean, uh, um, but we assume they need someone to watch their face, and that supposed not to be naive in, in a relationship with, with them. So to demand to them, if they want collaboration, several things, such as to improve mechanism tools uh, to uh, be very effective, or the, mass, the most effective we can, to fight misinformation. The idea was, and uh, it already worked, for instance, if you have a Facebook page, if you are a Facebook user, and you have in your post some fake news, no? uh, uh, a pop-up shop show, show, shows up to you, saying, oh, you're interested in this, uh, in this information, you want to learn more about this, click here, and that click redirects yourself into Ines platforms, uh, in which uh, 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 through videos, uh, diagrams, and so on, in a very easy way, we try to explain and to get information into that user. Um, and in the third level, a liaison with uh, 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 social uh, 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 initiatives, uh, social uh, 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 civil society initiatives, such as Verificado 2018, which was not just uh, another fact-checking uh, 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 um, uh, um, uh, um, attempt, uh, because fact-checking, everybody does fact-checking. Fox News does fact-checking, CNN does fact-checking, and, and, and you already know what to expect of Fox News or CNN fact-checking. I mean, the idea was to uh, uh, build an initiative with the participation of the conventional media, but uh, which not depends from them. Uh, uh, there was an initiative uh, uh, pushed up by, by, by several digital uh, 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 information agencies. Uh, the idea was that uh, um, many uh, 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 media companies borrow journalists to them to work not for the mass media corporation, but for that initiative. Uh, they, will tr they train them uh, uh, on uh, fact-checking uh, mechanisms. Uh, they give information that is, uh, was used by the conventional media. Uh, on one hand, they obviously get the support of INE and the Electoral Court to get uh, 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 true and very opportune information. And uh, another thing that they done, uh, they decided, was to uh, dismiss themselves after the election ends. So to avoid any accusation of political intention. Uh, for the political intention. So that's the Mexican model uh, uh, we've been sharing with m many other EMBs around the continent. Uh, but I think I'm uh, already about to exceed the time Duncan has given to me. So I uh, thank so much <laughs> the, your patience and your time. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very flexible and patient man. Okay, Don't yes. Worry. I, I, um, I that's not what my staff says. But. Um, <laughs> Thank you for leading us through that. I mean, both the, the history of it, but also, most importantly, the relevance of the INE today and what's going on, including its challenges. Um, I'd like to take a, a, a selection of questions yeah, sure. from, the, from the audience, but let me just make a quick comment here. And this is not my view, but this is uh, uh, opinions that are being expressed to me in Mexico, yeah. which is that you know, back in 2018, there were many people across the country that said, they will never let Andrés Manuel win this election. Mm -hmm. And after he won, a lot of people, not necessarily the same people, but a lot of people said, this is the ultimate proof of democratic progress in this country, mm -hmm. is that a candidate who was clearly and repeatedly expressed himself to be against the establishment 
was able to become president of Mexico and his party was able to dominate the Congress in such a way. So in some ways, the ultimate achievement of the IFE, then INE, and of the democratic system in Mexico um, was the electoral triumph of Andrés Manuel López Obrador. In As I say, this is not my opinion. This is yeah, the yeah. things that have been said to me. Um, I'd be particularly interested in, in hearing at some point um, about what you have to say about building the culture of democracy in Mexico, particularly with regards to the fact that Mexico repeatedly seems to be have a very low approval rating of democracy, according to opinion polls, um, although those numbers have gone up recently, which I think is a, is a good sign. Um, but let me first of all take questions from our, sure. from our audience, please. Alma? Oh, thank you. When you mentioned about how to prevent your local EMBs to become damage control agencies. Okay. However, when you go and touch upon the challenges that as in as an institution you're facing in Mexico, it strikes me that you're becoming a damage control agency. So how are you, what's your plan to combat those challenges and to prevent to become that damage control agency that you're focusing at that local level on fake news, but just as a survival of INE? Thank you. Is there a second question that we can take from the audience right now? Chris? So some of the, you know, Duncan mentioned some of the, the public opinion polling, but I think it's, you know, very interesting right now that the level of confidence in Mexico's electoral institution, the level of confidence in Mexico's democratic institutions more broadly is actually very strongly recovered from what it was a few years ago. Yeah. Um, yet you identify some risks that are that you're you know facing as an electoral agency right now. How do you reconcile those things? But and I guess may, maybe more importantly, I think this goes back a bit to the story of the creationist versus the evolutionist. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the reason I think in some ways that are there's a there's a pushback maybe on this idea of an evolution yeah because there's been such a high degree of discontent right and that's of course why we have the creationist story is because there was such a high degree of discontent and so there was maybe a need not just for small incremental improvements over time but of big change right of big improvements in terms of democracy in Mexico and I don't know that that means necessarily at the INE mm -hmm. but there's definitely a, a sense across Mexico that there's a need for big change and yeah, so sure. You know, how is it that we can pull the two stories together? Because I, I think in a time of so much political polarization, instead of having one side versus the other, the, the way to really strengthen Mexico's democratic institutions is to have inclusive support for them. Um, so what is the path forward for an institution like INE at a time of political polarization, I suppose, sure. is the question. Thank you, Chris. Any other questions there? Please. Yes. If you don't mind introducing yourself. Of course. Victor Gamas from McClarty Associates. Um, thank you for, for coming, Lorenzo. Um, I want to ask about the consultas en revocación de mandato mm -hmm. and how INE will be administrating those um, in the coming, uh, I think it's in 2021 or, or yeah. 2021, they will be called. Uh, and can you just go into more detail as to uh, the processes of, of calling that up? Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. We have three excellent questions okay, there. Right. I, um, I, I, sort of, I said something at the beginning, but I'd also like to just make another comment, which is that I remember when I arrived in Mexico in 1996, yeah. everything was still had that sort of new car smell about it with, with regards to elections. Um, but one of the things that I found remarkable was that people did not take for granted the fact that their vote would count. They yeah. didn't take for granted that the vote was secret. Yeah. I remember speaking to people in those days and you'd say, so how are you going to vote? They'd say, I'm not going to tell you, my vote is secret. Yeah, yeah, sure. That has now become much more uh, accepted. It was yeah. not not exceptional, and I think that's maybe that's part of the the the, the calculation here yeah. is that maybe people have come to assume that the electoral system will will work, even though those voices in 2018 said no, they'll never let him win. You know, yeah. and I think that's that's it. It's part of that culture and public education about democracy. Yeah. But uh, the other questions are much more interesting. No, 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 not at all. Well. Um, let me end it with the building of a, a, cult, a, a culture of democracy and link it with your last comment, Duncan. Uh, uh, let me start with Sarah's uh, question. Um, well, uh, any uh, EMB, any uh, electoral authority, should be prepared to face unexpected uh, 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 problems. So it, it should be prepared to make damage control anyway. The fact is, if you only you know, push back 
and wait that something happens to act. I mean, you're losing, I mean, a, a very important time and you're losing ground. I mean, uh, uh, and that's why I, 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 uh, I recommend, we did it, by the way, with, uh, uh, with the partnership with the NDI and, uh, and, uh, in, in Guatemala in the last presidential election, uh, after the third uh, turn uh, uh, has over and uh, in face of the second turn. I mean, uh, you have to explain almost everything. Uh, if, you, if you lose the opportunity to explain even the things you think, you think the people have already uh, uh, known, I mean, you lost an opportunity. That's why, for instance, I, I, let me explain one, one example. We built uh, uh, in 2019 election the idea of the trust chain. I mean, the electoral system has been built as a, as a sort of trust chain. Every step is necessary to be accomplished, well accomplished, to go further to the next one. Uh, uh, for instance, and the first step is to have a, a trustable electoral list. Mm -hmm. And we have made a lot of efforts. Uh, remember, you have your ID card, you, you, I mean, your electoral ID, which, by the way, is the main uh, uh, way to identify yourself in Mexico. Uh, um, uh, uh, that list is permanently, permanently audited by political parties, by specialists from academia, uh, by, pol by, by, by citizens uh, uh, in face of every election, and so on. So trust on your electoral list. Well, if you don't have a trustable electoral list, you cannot go to the next step, which is select among, among the people on that list the ones who will be eventually raffled and train it to become a, 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 um, a, a polling station officers. And the next uh, uh, is Labon. My God. Chain, 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 yeah. okay. Thank you. chain link of the chain no? uh, 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 is, well, the people in Mexico, the one who counts vote, your vote is your neighbor. And it could be you, you know. So, I mean, it's much more complex otherwise to explain what uh, electoral law suppose uh, uh, Ines does. So, I mean, uh, th that's the idea. I mean, you must explain an election. You cannot assume that the people knows what will we go on. I mean, yes, they know they will vo go to vote on, on so, and, and, and the D-Day. The, the but you must, explain, you must explain what happened before. Mm -hmm. What are the conditions that we are building to get that, to reach that day? with whole confidence that your vote will be well counted and count. So, uh, I, I mean, uh, it's maybe, we assume like that, we have to get to the basics. You know, the ABC once again, once again, a hammer on it. But if you do it, when there is a complaint against the electoral list, it's too late. That's why, I, I, I mean, I mean uh, 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 it's very easy to say. But you must, you know, besides that, there are very complex uh, 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 communication strategies you have to think about and eventually improve. Uh, I like to say uh, every political campaign has its war room, no? right? Uh, well, we decided one year before the elections, the organization of the elections started to build and to, stop and to set up a peace room, no? So uh, it's a very close space. It's not a, an assembly. I mean, in which you have to decide, no? What's the communicational route you will follow to? Obviously, uh, uh, on your way, you will, you will fa have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 problems that raises and you have to face on. I mean, and yes, the, the so-called bomberazos in Mexico, no? Uh, well, that's, that's the idea. Uh, Chris, yes, uh, indeed, uh, fortunately, we reached the, 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 uh, the, the amounts of tr public trust that IFE already had in, uh, at, her, at his best moment, uh, which is, by the way, just a couple months before 2006 elections, uh, um, which is more or less 60, 60 64% of uh, trustability. Uh, I think one thing we have to assume is that in, in, in large part, that's because we are the ones who issue 
the electoral ID. So everybody in Mexico has in it with himself at, the, at his wallet or his ba uh, bag, you know. Um, and that's part of the strategy to get linked with the uh, social, uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the civil society. I mean, uh, uh, we must improve those links to face what's coming on. Um, anyway, as, as uh, experience shows, you know, building trust is a very complex process, and losing it is, occurs very fast. So, uh, uh, I mean, every uh, 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 this attention uh, you make in the, in the way on, I mean, could be very dangerous. Um, yes, indeed, probably is very interesting uh, 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 your, your point of view about evolutionism and creationism uh, positions. The fact is, uh, how can we put together those, uh, those two things? Well, the fact is, it's not a Mexican problem. I think. The anger you're looking, the social anger you're looking around the world, in many ways, is the result of the un unaccomplished uh, promises of democracy. No, uh, uh, I'm quoting Bobbio. No, uh, uh, and that's, I think that's a problem. I mean, uh, 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 right now the major problem for democracy in Mexico is to solve the problem. I mean, even elections is to solve the inequality, the poverty, the insecurity, the uh, corruption and impunity problems. Because those are transverse and structural problems that affect every social uh, uh, environment or area, including election, uh, the elections one, uh, the electoral one. So, uh, I mean, obviously, as an EMB, we cannot solve problems of insecurity, but uh, 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 but we, we must assume that that anger, that uh, I mean, is, is, is the so kind of fuel for uh, the. Uh, 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 polarization discourse uh, is not an invention. It's down there, and we have to solve it. And we had to convince people, and that's why civic culture is very important, I, I, I intend, yeah. that the best way to solve those problems is through democratic ways. Those problems are, pro are, 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 are not a problems of democracy. They're, they're not... Uh, uh, the democracy didn't deploy them or detonate them. It's the fact of uh, wrong public policies. What's the best way to uh, improve a, poli a public policy? Through elections. No? It's very easy to say. It's very complex to, to uh, instrument it. But I think if we do, do, not, do not do that, we don't do that, we will have a, a, a huge democratic problem in the future. And I think that's what is happening in many countries around the world. Um, uh, and yes, I think, Duncan, again, uh, uh, and I'm going to the uh, Consultas Populares and the uh, mandate revocation. Um, yes, uh, uh, the problem is how in a very uh, uh, adverse um, environment, I'm talking about the internet and social media and so on, we try to build a sort kind of digital citizenship in democratic key. Uh, we're, try, we're, we're improving some uh, 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 um, democratic culture uh, programs, this, this, the one we call in civic and so on. But I think, I mean, there is no only solution and there is, and obviously it's not, it cannot be uh, assumed as a responsibility of just one political or public actor, such as the EMBs. I mean, uh, the, 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 the countries, the, 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 uh, uh, the forest countries, no, uh, uh, in the 50s, they decided to, bet, to make a huge bet on education, and uh, here, uh, here they are. I mean, I think we must assume, again, uh, as in, in the same way, to make a huge bet on civic education. I mean, the best uh, uh, um, barrier against, you know, the spread of a fake news you can achieve, you can improve mechanisms and strategies, but the best barrier should be the people who receive the fake news and doesn't retweet it or spread it. I mean, I mean, yes, it's easy to say. The real task is how can we reach them? Can we reach that that point? Uh, finally, uh, uh, the consultas populares. Well, those are reality. Are a reality. Uh, 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 if I'm not wrong, I've been here 
since Monday, but uh, uh, they didn't still publish uh, uh, the constitutional reform, but that's a fact. I mean, uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, yes, we will have a, 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 a referendum, of, a revocation referendum, a revocation de mandato, uh, and the first time in which it, it, it could be take place eventually uh, should be more or less, we estimate, eight months after midterm election in 2006, uh, I mean 21, uh, it could be a very uh, 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 um, complex election year because eventually we will have we will run the constitutional election at the first uh, 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 Sunday of June, I mean the sixth of June. Two months later, the first uh, uh, Sunday of, uh, of August is possible that we should run, INE should run, uh, the, consulta, the first Consulta Popular. And in February, around February, uh, eventually, the first uh, rev uh, revocation mandate re referendum. So how we will do that? I hope with enough money, talking about bu uh, budget cuts, uh, because that would suppose another national election. I mean, uh, the same number of polling stations and the same efforts. And we can, yes, to think about if the polling station officers that uh, held the, uh, the elections can uh, uh, be present and, and run the polling stations two months later. I don't know if eight months later, but anyway, uh, the fact is, uh, uh, right now, yes, that's a fact, because the constitutional reform is already approved, but there is no regulation of it. And the worst uh, scenario is that go forward without a legal regulation, and uh, 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 so the INE should regulate those constitutional uh, 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 exercises. Uh, because actually, I must be sincere, I don't know how to do it unless we reply, I mean, the rules to run, to organize an election. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, um, uh, I think it's at least, uh, I'm not uh, a supporter of uh, uh, um, uh, a revocation mandate referendum. I mean, I don't like it. I, I, uh, my, posi my personal position as a scholar is that uh, if you elect a, a governor or a president, to, uh, 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 to govern the country for six years uh, or, or two years in the case of Baja California, just two years, no? Uh, 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 I mean, there are other ways. In impeachment is, is not politically correct to, uh, to bring back to the table, yeah? Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, right now, but I mean, there are other ways. Anyway, that's a fact. Uh, 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 it's inevitable if they accomplish the requirements, the number of people who uh, uh, support uh, and the realization of that uh, 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 referendum and so on. Um, uh, I'm worried just about the consultas populares that is not clear still uh, who will write, uh, re redact uh, the question, mm -hmm. because that's the difference. I mean, uh, if you run an election, uh, if you uh, uh, write yes, a referendum such as in Baja California, they intended to do, they do, they done. Uh, do you want uh, 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 that uh, just a two term, uh, a two years term uh, of, uh, for, the, uh, for the governor uh, with all the problems it has in, 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 in terms of governability, stability, and so on? Or do you prefer uh, a five years uh, term uh, that provides us stability, uh, investments, and so on? Well, you must be crazy to select two years. No, but that's a point. No? Thank you. Any other questions around the table? Yeah. Yeah. I think if not in it, there must be an independent commission to do that. Remember that what still stands on the Constitution is that the question, the constitutionality of the question should be determined by the court, which is a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
That's what uh, is, uh, avoid in Colombia, for instance, the third or the second re-election of, of, of President uh, Uribe. Uh, and that was avoided by the, by the Constitutional Court. So I think, I mean, it would be very complicated if, if INE writes, if Lorenzo Cordova writes the question. But I think we have to convoke an independent commission, mm -hmm. technical commission, to write uh, the proper question before it is, it is submitted into the constitutional consideration of the Supreme Court. No? Mm -hmm. Lorenzo, I want to thank you uh, personally country. for coming here and taking the time. I want to thank you professionally um, for sharing so much knowledge with us. Um, this is not the last time that you will come to the Wilson Center. Uh, even if you don't want to, we'll drag you here. Um, and I want to thank you for being so open to, uh, to these conversations. Uh, it's very, very important in a culture of democracy that people in positions of influence are available to be questioned. Yeah. Um, it's one of the principles of the Wilson Center, a, uh, an organization that's committed to dialogue, mm -hmm. um, that nobody comes here without being asked questions. And I think you've engaged with our, with our audience extremely well. I'm sure that uh, on Twitter and other social media, we're going to get lots of questions afterwards. Okay, yeah, sure. I know that I got uh, lots of comments before you arrived um, from various different uh, groups within Mexico. Some of them may even have been real people. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, but I, I, I want to say, Literally. yes, <laughs> I want to say for, 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 really from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here. No, Good country. luck yeah. with everything that you're facing in the, in the years ahead. Um, it's always going to be challenging, um, but if it's any, um, if it's any consolation, uh, I was looking at your timeline, and you went back to 1977 for Mexican democracy. Yeah. You know, my country, back in the UK, has been doing this for hundreds of years, and we still haven't got it right. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's a process. Yeah. Um, but I think that you have a very firm foundation. So, thank you so much for being here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, thank you, you for thank coming you. out uh, to the Wilson Center today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the time.